On the 29th of May, 1821, an 81-year-old man stood in the dock, charged with inciting rebellion. His name was Major John Cartwright, a retired naval officer from a well-connected and moderately wealthy Nottinghamshire family. His cause was to secure the vote for all men. Cartwright's story illustrates an important shift that occurred in political radicalism in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, as politics ceased to be a gentlemanly preserve. Prior to this, the cause of parliamentary reform had, in part, been a weapon in the struggle for control within a social elite. However, these gentlemanly radicals came to realise that they would have to increasingly enlist the people to apply pressure to Parliament. Cartwright was one such gentleman radical, an early advocate of parliamentary reform and the universal male franchise. In Take Your Choice, published in 1776, Cartwright called for reforms which would later find place in the People's Charter of 1838. Annual elections, equal constituencies, a secret ballot, the abolition of the property qualification to stand for Parliament and the payment of MPs. This was of course the time of the American Revolution, a war which convinced Cartwright that the British Parliament was corrupt. Cartwright called for a compromise with the colonists and agreed that they should have a say in who governed them and set their taxes. It was this position and Cartwright's refusal to serve under Lord Howe in North America which ended his naval career. To advance calls for reform, Cartwright helped form the Society for Constitutional Information in 1780, set up to distribute radical pamphlets, including Thomas Paine's Rights of Man. The society was to be made up of men of rank and consequence, with annual dinner toast to Magna Carta, the majesty of people and America in arms. It had little success. Cartwright also opposed the war with revolutionary France, describing it as the Rotten Borough War, and again called for conciliation and sought reform through a socially exclusive club the Society of Friends of the People. It was not until 1812, though, that Cartwright came upon his most successful organisation and arguably made his biggest contribution to the cause of political reform, the Hamden Clubs. Taking its name from John Hamden, the notable opponent of Charles I's personal rule in the lead-up to the English Civil War, the first Hamden Club was just as socially exclusive as the other reforms, clubs and societies Cartwright had been involved with. To ensure respectability, its members had to be men of substance, paying a subscription of two guineas and drawing an annual income of at least £300 a year from land. Cartwright came to realise, though, that the tactic of encouraging cooperation between sympathetic Whig politicians and the gentlemanly radicals was proving a dead end. Henry Hunt described the strategy as contemptible and ridiculous. Now convinced that the only way to force reform onto the political agenda was by going to the country, Cartwright began a missionary tour to convert the provinces to the cause, establishing popular, less socially restrictive Hamden clubs in his wake. Cartwright's second tour in 1813 saw the now 73-year-old travel more than 900 miles in 29 days, visiting some 300 towns and villages. By 1817, 150 new Hamden clubs had been established in the northwest. At the New Hamden Clubs, working men were introduced to the writings of reformers like William Cobbett, whose political register made clear in plain language that the distress of the poor could be addressed through parliamentary reform. Cartwright also used his tours to gather signatures for mass petitions, gathering in 1813 over 130,000 signatures in support of a taxpayer franchise and annual parliaments. While the Seditious Meetings Act of 1817 made it more difficult for political clubs to meet, the Hamden Clubs had established an important model for grassroots organisation and activism. The political union societies which replaced the clubs were well-organised groups of working-class men who wished not only to secure the vote, but to educate their members to be worthy of it. They helped organise more than 2,000 petitions in 1817 and 1818. As for John Cartwright, he was convicted of sedition on the 29th of May 1821 and asked the judge to make his sentence imprisonment. The judge refused, instead fining Cartwright £100. Free to continue his activities, Cartwright completed his monumental 400-page work, The English Constitution Produced and Illustrated. In it, he restated the ancient liberties enjoyed by Englishmen, called for political equality, and praised the American experiment in Republican government. In July 1824, Thomas Jefferson, the former President of the United States, wrote to Cartwright to congratulate him on the work, and, in a touching end note, suggested that, given both their advanced years, they would soon have an eternity to discuss good government.